We have a sad story here that shows just how corrupt politics in America really is. So this highlights the problem of the revolving door between big business and Wall Street and government. It's a pervasive problem and people rarely speak about it. We speak about other aspects of money and politics, but the revolving door is one that for whatever reason gets less coverage and less attention. Well, this story really is the peak, the pinnacle of that problem. So Ryan Grimm reports here. A Democratic corporate lobbyist is jumping into a Senate race to fill a seat made vacant by the retirement of a Republican corporate lobbyist. You can't make this up. Uh, the news is a major boon to Democrats who are looking to retake the Senate and also to people looking for evidence that the political system is deeply corrupt. The general practice of rotating from public office into the private sector and back again is deeply ingrained, but one particular Indiana Senate seat has hosted more than its share of special interest romps. Since at least 1989, the seat has been occupied by either a former or soon-to-be lobbyist. Uh, so Evan Bai is the corporate lobbyist who's a Democrat who's running again this time around. He retired in 2010 because he said he wanted to do something with his life that was important. Uh, he decided very quickly, yeah, that's a bad idea. Let me continue to uh, be a terrible human being and a sellout. So they say, Bai signed on with McGuire Woods where he joined the lobbying campaign to repeal the medical device tax, which plays a role in financing the Affordable Care Act. He then joined the private equity firm Apollo and pushed against efforts to close the carried interest loophole, which famously allows money managers to pay laughably low tax rates. In addition, Bai signed up with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the nation's largest corporate lobby, to lead a PR campaign in opposition to regulations promulgated by the Obama administration. This effort sought to roll back or block the implementation of regulations at the Environmental Protection Agency, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, Securities and Exchange Commission, and the newly created Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. So, when we talk about Hillary Clinton, for example, and I always say she's a center-right, corporatist, sell-out Democrat. She's, she is the status quo. She is the establishment. Uh, and I actually found it difficult to think of other Democrats who are to the right of her. Well, there are some Democrats who are to the right of her and who are even bigger sellouts than her. One of them is Evan Bayh. And Evan Bayh is uh, running again for the Senate. And if he gets elected, of course, uh, he will act just like a Republican. Just like he did the last time he was elected. So this shows you, now this is a particularly egregious example here, but this shows you, by and large, your choices in America. Your choices are the Republican Party, who barely even try to hide it anymore, that they're just the political arm or wing of corporate America, and you have the Democratic Party who, they'll sprinkle in some change on social issues, and they'll try to be on the right side with social issues. They'll throw you a bone every now and then on economic issues, but they're also an 80% sellout to corporate America. So Republicans are 100% sellouts, Democrats are 80% sellouts, and they're your choices. Shut the fuck up and make a decision. And man, is it frustrating. You know, People wonder, well, actually, the people themselves don't wonder, but people in Washington wonder, I don't get it, well, they, they just elected us. This could be right after an election. They just elected us, and look at our approval rating, it's so low. And there's a reason for that, because people know deep down that everybody in Washington isn't representing them. So the approval rating for Congress has recently gone back and forth between 13% and 9%. Think about that. I mean, you could have it so you just get elected and you do a poll within a month and people go, yeah, you know, it's a 12% approval rating, 13% approval rating. And in Washington, like, oh, I don't understand. You just picked me. I thought it'd be great. <laughs> well, it's because everybody gets deep down. They might not be able to explain it perfectly, but they understand deep down, well, clearly you're not representing us because we, we send you there and nothing changes. Certainly nothing changes for the better. If anything, things get worse. 
And it's clear that, I mean, just look at what they do. Uh, corporate welfare for all these giant corporations bail out Wall Street like that when they need it. But is there ever a bailout for the people? Is there ever, you know, some sort of legislation that reverses the disastrous trade deals that shipped good American jobs overseas? You know, there's been stagnating wages since the 1980s. So obviously people aren't going to like you. You haven't done dick for them. You've done things for the corporations who are screwing them. So the interests are at odds. And you chose the corporations because they pay you. And again, your choices are shitty Democrats and even shittier Republicans. And you can see it not just on domestic policy and economic policy, but also on foreign policy. I say all the time, the choice between the Democrats and the Republicans, it's soft imperialism versus imperialism. So when I say soft imperialism, I mean Obama style. So, you know, hey, in most countries that we're intervening, we're just doing drone strikes. So no boots on the ground. I mean, what's the problem? All we're doing is blowing people up with drones remotely. People in a, are sitting in a fucking Las Vegas studio and pressing buttons to kill people. By the way, 90% of the time we get the wrong people. According to internal government memos, it's not me speaking, that's them speaking internally. Former drone operators have crazy stories about how, you know, we call them fun-sized terrorists when they kill kids and stuff like that insane. But uh, Obama is, hey, we do drone strikes in most of the places we're intervening. And in other places, it's just traditional drone strikes. You send in the fighter jets. I'm sorry, traditional airstrikes. You send in the fighter jets. You shoot the missiles at the targets. What? That's not hard imperialism. And then in a few places, we have special ops forces on the ground. So, you know, hey, we're not doing neocon style. Send 50,000 or 100,000 troops in there and let them fucking permanently occupy in a giant base and escalate and fight more. But hey, we got 8,000 troops in there. Special ops people on the ground just helping people. What's the problem? There's your soft imperialism. Intervention in seven countries. But hey, we didn't do a, a, a full-on invasion with 50 to 100,000 troops, so let's not call it a war. And let's uh, pretend like we're not doing it. That's the Democrats. The Republicans, we already know how they are. The neocons, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld. I mean, they wear it on their sleeve. Yeah, we want to go in everywhere. I mean, they, they would have... If they thought they could get away with it, they also would have went into Iran when they were in power. I mean, obviously, they went into Iraq and they, you know, did horrible things there. Afghanistan, uh, they went there too, though there originally was a better argument to go into Afghanistan after 9-11 than, than Iraq. But they also would have went into uh, Iran. I mean, they were saying that they wanted to. So, they're, they're your choices. Well, we're sick of these fucking choices, man, and this is why... Grassroots movements are so necessary because on election day, oftentimes you really are left with just, hey, pick the lesser of two evils. And anybody with a brain goes, well, I mean, one is more evil. What am I going to do? <laughs> Go for the more evil one? No. So, but that's why when the elections aren't happening, so when there are primaries, we have to try to push the most progressive candidates possible. That's why you have to fight when there's not an election and even during the election. Why not? For stuff like Wolfpack, where we try to get an amendment to get money out of the political system. You know, you got to fight for systemic reform. Uh, Represent.us is another one. It's an, they're, they're trying uh, different routes to get money out of politics. So there are ways to go about doing this. There are also, you know, big uh, progressive groups that try to get progressive candidates to run. So there's some people working on the money in politics angle. There are other people working on just getting more progressive candidates in the race up front. Bernie Sanders recently said as part of the political revolution, he wants people who like him and his policies to jump into the race. Thousands are ready to do that. So this is what we do. This is how uh, we change stuff. And the end goal and the end game is to get money out of the system. Because if you don't get money out of the system, you're always going to have Evan Bayh. You're always going to have the Democrats who are basically old school Republicans and the Republicans who are crazy people who, you know, are just representing Goldman Sachs while at the same time screaming, fuck gay people, fuck trans people, and let's ban all drugs. So th that's going to be your spectrum. Those are going to be your choices until we get this systemic reform. But when we get this systemic reform, that's when you experience what a functioning democracy looks like. I mean, there are some places in Scandinavia, there are some places throughout the world that have clean elections. And their political spectrum just makes more sense. You have liberals who are actual liberals. Here in the United States, the furthest left we got is Bernie Sanders, and he's a social democrat, which in the modern world is really just a centrist, not a liberal. So if we get money out of the system, the politicians will reflect the will of the voters more because we will be paying them for their campaigns, not special interests. 
But until we do that, it's Evan Bayh all day long or people even worse than him. And that's a grim reality to face.